Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I'm going to discuss something that for people who don't use the training system that I use, promote, coach, learn from, they're going to disagree, and that's okay. doesn't matter. I've got a pretty big squat, still getting better, and I have plenty of lifters who are getting pretty big squats too. And I know plenty of guys who use these methods and have squats that most of you would consider to be unobtainable. And that's the whole point that speed squats and good mornings really are the key to building a big, powerful squat. I believe that's your foundational work. Now, I'm not saying some quad work can't help, but I don't think most of you need to actually spend a lot of time doing quad work if you're in shape. Uh, in other words, sled drags, plyometrics, things like that will give you all the extra quad that you need beyond your actual speed training. Okay. Your speed training will build quads. It will build quads. And quads are, quite frankly, very rarely the limiting factor in your squat. Again, let's come over to the point. I'm not saying they don't matter. I'm not saying they're not a primary mover. But if you're squatting in such a way that the quads are really becoming a limiting factor, you really are not getting enough muscles involved, or you have a weak posterior chain and hips. Because the squat isn't limited by it. All these other muscles are involved. So how do we build these muscles up, and how do we build the technique to squat? Speed work. Like speed boxes and good mornings will teach you most of what you need to know. And I fully understand there are people and experts out there who argue against that. But the people who teach these things produce a lot of world-class level squatters. And the point here is that there's more than one method that works. But the thing that people need to remember is that it's probably not wise to combine methods. You better pick a school of thought and run with it. If you want to run a Russian squat program with very high frequency heavy squatting, focus on your quads, that's fine. But you're going to have to stick to that. So let's come over to this. Speed squats. Speed squats will teach you how to explode. They'll teach you how to get control, how to sit back onto the box. And why does that matter? Uh, because control on the box is what carries over to a raw squat. In other words, when you can sit back onto a box with a nice wide stance and have complete perfect control for the last inch of the eccentric and you can unload your hips while still staying tight and then drive yourself up and externally rotate the hips and drive your feet out while exploding that will carry over to a back squat okay? you will have complete and perfect carry over to a back squat on that because the back squat is actually easier to perform than the box squat. A properly done box squat. Now this is me hitting almost a max here. Uh, I haven't really tested a true max lately on this. I'm ramping up to real close. And yes, I did have a world-class level coach look at this particular lift for me. That's the beauty of having friends. So I'm going to tell people, and this is why they don't like it when I say this, if you don't squat at least seven or 800 pounds, I don't really need your input. Because I have guys who squat that much who look at my lifts. So why, why would I need someone else to look at it, right? Not useful. Or have a thousand pound squatter look at your lift. Um, and that's usually what I do personally. So I am, I am coached on my stuff too. But if you notice what I do there, it's control. Control, sit back. Notice my knee goes all the way back. There is no knee slide. That is indicative of perfect control. Now, it doesn't mean when we do these things that the back squat's going to look identical to that. But it doesn't matter because if you can sit all the way back without much control, 
and soft touch the box before you unload, what does that tell you? It tells you that if the box wasn't there, you're going to have no problem exploding from that point or deeper and getting a stretch reflex. You're going to move more weight. You're going to move at least equal to weight, but you're going to have the potential for more weight once you really add that stretch reflex in. But if you can sit back, you have control. Well, where do you learn to do that? Because I only do that once every three weeks, right? I, I hit a heavy box squat once every three weeks. That's not enough to practice. Why do we do that? That's there to learn the intramuscular coordination of handling a heavy weight. It's there to learn how to strain. It's there to learn how to get used to a big heavy weight on top of you. The actual movement and the power is learned off the speed work. We do a lot more volume. Like this speed work here is 5x5. Five five. Done weekly. And we have to learn how to get tight. We have to learn how to get that technique and drive as hard as we can and then hit those super heavy bands. So we have to explode into those bands. Now you may not have bands and, and that's okay. You've got to make other stuff work. You can still do straight weight. It's just a different animal. You learn how to explode off that box. You learn control you learn power all right so how does a good morning fit in what do we do on a good morning we learn to push our hips back and then drive up think about what we're doing on the box squat think of the muscles involved this builds all the support musculature right this builds the hamstrings glutes low back upper back this builds the foundation for a powerful squat. It doesn't build the squat movement itself. It builds a foundation for it. It builds all the stability. It builds the hamstrings. It teaches us how to hip hinge. It teaches us how to push our hips back. It builds our erectors. It builds our upper back in such a way that we can support and drive through. Hey, if you're really, really, really strong at good mornings, you're never going to miss a squat from good morning and a squat either. If it starts to happen, you're just going to push through because you're used to locking through with a heavy weight. That's why Louis Simmons basically says that. If you can good morning as much as your max squat, then you're never going to miss that max squat at the top. It's not going to happen due to a forward lean. It teaches us how to push our hips back. And that's an important distinction that I noticed even messing with the box squats for me personally. As I learned to get really heavy, what do we define as really heavy, exceeding your body weight? When you start hitting your own body weight or higher on a good morning for rep work, what happens? You are forced to push your hips back. You can't just bend over anymore. You're forced to really push that ass back. When we learn to push that butt back, again, with vertical shins, that's what we have to do on the eccentric of the box squat. And when you learn to do it with heavy weight, we learn to push back and to sit back onto that box. We learn to have control. Control. You have to push your hips back and control the eccentric while keeping those shins upright. And when you can do that, any weight that you can handle on a box squat is going to turn into a joke when the box is removed and you just squat it and pop out of the bottom of the stretch reflex. But those speed boxes, it's the way to go to then build the foundation after that. People say, well, why, why can't you just squat? Box squats are easier on recovery. They are easier on recovery they teach us better force production. They teach us a better movement pattern. Okay, they're better for athletes. Again, it will make us more explosive and more athletic, but it also will teach us how to squat and it'll teach us control. It'll teach us power and it will build the squat on its own. We just need the max work to learn how to strain and to develop the intramuscular coordination to handle really heavy weights and to get used to that really heavy weight sitting on top of us but the foundational work is the speed work and the good mornings and i'm not saying other lifts don't contribute 
because they build up musculature and things too. I do a whole lot of reverse hypers and sled drags and glute ham raises personally. But the foundation are these those two movements. Those two movements might build the foundation to do what you just watched there. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.